Praise God, it's good to be with you again another Sunday. God is good. This morning, our message will be entitled, He Was Born. Praise God. Could we just reverence God a minute? Father, we thank you for your word. Your word is forever settled in heaven. Lord God, we pray that your word touch the hearts of the hearers today. Father, have your divine way in this message today, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Today's scripture reading is taken from the book of Matthew chapter 1 and verse 16. Just permit me to read this verse with you. And Jacob begot Joseph, the husband of Mary, of whom was born. I just want us to pause on that little word, born for a minute, who is called the Christ. This week I've celebrated another birthday and it came to me in no uncertain terms, hey, Jesus was born. I've oftentimes had conversations with a lot of people who decided in their own way and in their own lives that I am not going to celebrate Christmas. And they have good reasons perhaps not to celebrate Christmas. Some as I will not argue with, will tell you that you cannot prove that Jesus Christ was born on the 25th of December. I said, okay. Some will say, you are not even sure that it was around that season that Jesus was born. But what came to my mind stunningly this week is that, hey, I am celebrating a birthday and what about Jesus? The thought came to me so strong that I took some time just to ponder on what a lot of theories are about the birth of Christ. Some will say, according to the book of Matthew, when Jesus was found by the wise men, it was over two years after his birth. My mind goes on all, almost instantaneous to one event that happened in our lives. My wife and I were doing a little bit of work in an orphanage. And there was this boy who came in. And he did not know the date of his birth. So my wife and I, we took the time and we bought some presents. And we sat there and we said, hey, today we are going to celebrate your birthday. We did not have the evidence to back up what day this child was born. But the child and the look in the child's eye brought some relief and some conviction to my heart. It doesn't matter the day that Jesus was born. It doesn't matter the year Jesus was born. What I've come to realize is the importance that he was born. You see, if he wasn't born, then there would not have been a savior. If he wasn't born, then there would not have been even the change from B.C. to A.D. The man Jesus Christ came on the scene and time and seasons change. The man Jesus was born and a significant thing we as humans must realize. In fact, what the word of God says is that, hey, unto us a child is born. The government should be upon his shoulder. Even in Matthew, it says later on in verse 23, Behold, a virgin shall bring forth a child. And thou shalt call his name Emmanuel, which is interpreted, God be with us. The point I'm making is, because he was born, we can say today, Jesus, Emmanuel, God is with us. Sometimes we go through life and we need to find out or need to know that we are not going through life alone. Sometimes we need to know and understand that, hey, somebody was born to call Emmanuel. You can call upon Emmanuel because he was born. You see, a lot of us celebrate the life and times of good men. I've even heard about celebrating the death of a of, of, of remembrance of, 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 of so past soldiers. They are remembrance days, and they are days that we choose to remember. 
And some of us as Christians will take the time and say, hey, I am not going to celebrate the 25th of December. That is not to me the important thing. The important thing to me is this, that you recognize that something great happened in our world. That something great happened in humanity's existence, which is the fact that he was born. You see, the Bible promised it way back in the Old Testament that a virgin will bring forth a child. And it doesn't matter today whether, hey, he was born uh, uh, outside of wedlock, as some of you will say. But what it matters is that he was born. He came into the world. And not only that, the Bible tells us that angels sang his glory. On the day that he was born, angels sang his praises that to mankind a redeemer has come. Why should we celebrate? Because all over the world, they take time. Some of them may not celebrate it as we would like them to. But sir, madam, the fact is, the whole world paused to recognize that someone great came into the world. I was told that in the, during the Vietnam War, one Christmas, all battles ceased. All gunfire ceased on that special day. So according to the word of God, he came to bring peace. And therefore the Prince of Peace caused peace to reign. Why I am saying all this is because the fact is he was born. I remember my even my mother celebrated her birthday on one day. But when she checked the records and it came back, it was really another day. So, sir, it doesn't matter which day is the day, the birth, the date of his birth. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter which year or which month it was. That doesn't matter. What matters is that we must remember and put into context the real meaning of Christmas. The real meaning of Christmas, as I've come to realize, is not the fetting, is not the drinking, even not the eating, because it, it, there's a time that all of this will cease. This does not constitute what the real meaning of Christmas Christmas is. The real meaning of Christmas is Jesus Christ. The real meaning of Christmas, uh, sir, is not buying the, the new furniture uh, and preparing the house. Uh, sir, madam, the real meaning of Christmas is Jesus. You see, he came for a purpose. He came for a, a reason. My mind goes right now to, to Jonah and, and, and the, the, the big fish. A lot of people misinterpret the story of Jonah. The story of Jonah was not really about the big fish, but the story of Jonah was about a warning that God sent. The story of Jonah, a lot of people miss the message. Just like Christmas, a lot of people miss the message and go into the celebration. The message of Christmas is that Jesus came. And he came for a reason. In fact, what the Bible tells us is that, uh, in fact, in, in lower down in Matthew, it tells, tells you the story. It says in Matthew 21, and she shall call, bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus. For he shall save his people from their sins. Why there is Christmas? Sir, Christmas came because mankind was in a mess. Christmas came because mankind was in sin. And the reason why Jesus came is to take away that sin problem from your life. To take away that sin problem from you, sir. The reason for Christmas is Jesus coming to save you from your sins. A lot of people think that Christmas is a sad time. They only look at Jesus as a babe in a manger. So they could only see this little babe. 
but I have news for you today. That same babe who grew up, that same babe who was born in that manger, he grew up as a young lad. The Bible said he grew to the age of 30 when he began his ministry. This same Jesus, the Bible says, gave his life on Calvary for mankind. This Jesus that was born in the manger is the Savior of the world. Why is Christmas important? Because this same Jesus loves you. In fact, the Bible tells us in no uncertain terms that God so loved that he gave. He gave his son for a ransom for me and for you. This Jesus that was born was born to save. A point I would like to make quickly is not only that he was born to save, he also left us a promise. In fact, in the book of Acts, chapter 1, from verse 10, it says, And while they looked steadfastly towards heaven, as he went up, behold, two men stood by them with white apparel. And hear what he says. Watch also ye, ye men of Galilee. Why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner that you've seen him go into heaven. The promise is that this same Jesus of Christmas, this same Jesus of Easter, the promise is that this same Jesus will return. I am so glad to know that, hey, the Bible says if you believe in this Jesus, he shall save you, sir. This same Jesus who died for your sins over 2,000 years ago, the promise was made that he will return. And I'm so glad that it's not another Jesus. I'm so glad that he's not coming to be born again in a manger or even in a palace. I am so glad that he's not coming again to walk the dusty streets of Jerusalem like an ordinary man. But the Bible tells us when he comes again, he is coming with power and glory. The same Jesus that we celebrate every year for Christmas. That same Jesus is coming again. Sir, today I'm glad to report to you that this Jesus, he is coming again. A lot of people think that hate has been too long. A lot of people think that, hey, I have, I have wasted all my life. I've heard my grandfather and my grandparents speak about the coming of Jesus. And I've been here all my life and I have not seen him come. I am glad to report to you. So whether you believe it or not, the fact is that he will come again. This same Jesus, I put my trust and I put my hope in him because I know for a fact that he promised that he will come again. And so the angels say in the same manner, he will come again. One day he's going to burst the skies and put in his appearance. My question to you today is, would you be ready? You see, I've noticed even in my personal life that there's one time we get ready for. We will take the time and we will get ready for Christmas. Some of us will plan for months for that day. Some of us will plan the whole season as soon as Christmas or Boxing Day steps in. We start planning for the next Christmas. Sir, it's the same thing I believe should happen when it comes to the coming or the return of Jesus Christ. You must prepare. You must get ready because he is coming again. That same Jesus is coming again. But will he meet you ready? You see, being ready is not only on Christmas time when you remember. And I remember this, this in, in, in the book of Proverbs. Because men have a short memory. Men have convenient memory. We only think about God on certain times at, 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 of the year. 
From Boxing Day, we forget God. New Year's Day, we may remember. Easter, we may remember. And then we wait again until Christmas to celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ. But I'm here to let you know, sir, the Bible tells us, remember now the creator in the days of your youth. Sir, it's time that you remember because he is coming again. It's time you take the time to prepare for him. So just as you will prepare for any occasion, I, I spend some time preparing for my birthday, as I said, this week. And the thing about it is that I didn't plan for what had happened to me in my, on my birthday. I didn't plan to end up where I was on my birthday. I made all the preparations. I put things in place. In fact, my wife put things in place to celebrate my birthday in one way. And it so happened that I had to spend some hours in the hospital. I did not prepare for that. I did not plan to spend my, 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 my birthday like that. So my question to you, how are you intending to spend your eternity? How are you expecting to spend your eternity if you don't plan for it here and now? You see, it's a fact that Jesus will return. But just perhaps if he doesn't return before you die, where would you spend your eternity? Have you prepared for this? Have you prepared for where you're going to spend your eternity? Yes, we are speaking about Christmas. And the reason why we are speaking about Christmas, this is what he came to do. He did not came to hang Christmas trees and stockings around the, 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 the fireside. He came to save, seek and to save that which was lost. Are you lost this morning? Are you lost in your wilderness of sin? Are you lost? This is the reason why he came. For some of us who, or some of you who don't celebrate the 25th, I have no problem with that. I have no problem. But just as you remember your birthday, remember that a day that Jesus came into this world. Do not put it out of your mind because you will think that, hey, he just came upon a time and it's not important. But I'm saying here today, it's very important that you remember. Bring it into, keep it into remembrance because he was born. And because he was born, he died. And because he died, he rose again. And because he rose again, he's coming again. Are you ready? Are you ready to be with him? Some of you may say, hey, preacher, you have heard this time and time again. But I'm glad that he hasn't come as yet. You say, preacher, why are you saying that? Because today your soul can be saved. Today it could be your opportunity. Today could be the day that you surrender your life to him. Make this season one that it should be. Make this season one that can make a difference in your life. I remember before 1985, I celebrated Christmas just like everybody else. I will go to the neighbor's house. We will eat, we will drink. In fact, I boasted that I could eat the most. I could drink the most. In fact, sometimes I told myself that, hey, Christmas is the best time of the year because everybody seems to share. But in 1985, I realized that there is a difference with Christmas. I realized that something is different about Christmas. It did no longer mean to me the eating or the drinking. It no longer mean to me the, 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 the gifts and the presents. Uh, yes, the gifts and the presents are good. But to me, the greatest gift I received around Christmas was that Jesus Christ came into my life. Uh, Jesus Christ changed and transformed my life. Uh, when I enjoy that Christmas, uh, so that is the Christmas with a difference. I understood what it meant. Uh, 
to relieve myself from all the earthly doings and the earthly trappings and focus my life on the real reason for the season. Jesus came into my life and changed my life. This is what Christmas should mean to you. This is what Christmas should mean to all of you outside listening to this broadcast. Jesus is the reason for the season. He can change your life. As I explained just a little minute ago, he transformed my life. Now I see Jesus as the center of my Christmas. Now I see Jesus as the all in all for my Christmas. So it doesn't matter if the ham or the lamb is there. It doesn't matter if the drinks are there. You see, once I have Jesus, I've known the real reason for the season. Once I have Jesus, in fact, the best gift for the season is Jesus. Do you know him? Do you know him this morning? Do you know him? Do you know him? He is the one to know for the season. Don't put it past uh, that, hey, uh, I could go on next year. Don't put it past. Uh, enjoy the real fact. The Bible tells us uh, that when the wise men came uh, and they found uh, the reason for the season, uh, that they rejoice. Uh, you can have a true reason to rejoice this Christmas. I know that some of us or some of you are going through some hard times for this Christmas. You say, Brother Curtis, is there any reason to rejoice for this Christmas? All that I can see is a bad Christmas. The economy is bad and all that's going on, it's bad. When you listen to the news, it's only bad news. But I'm here to let you know today, the king is born. The Savior is born. I am here to let you know there is hope in your hopelessness. I am here to let you know that the King of Peace or the Prince of Peace can reign in your heart today because today is a good day. Whether you celebrate the 25th, the 1st or whatsoever day, it doesn't matter. But once you celebrate the Prince of Peace, once you celebrate the King of Kings, once you celebrate the Jesus, in fact the Christ of Christmas, then you will understand that you don't need all the earthly trappings, but all you need is Jesus, the Christ of Christmas in your life. This morning, I want to give you an opportunity. You know, we, 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 we talk a lot about Christmas. But I need to give you an opportunity to get to know the man of Christmas. You need to find him for yourself. Forget about what other people told you about him. Forget about what other people said about him. It's time that you know Jesus for yourself. I want to give you this opportunity. This morning you're listening or this afternoon you're listening to this broadcast. And you're, 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 you're so tired of, of all the hustle and the bustle of Christmas celebrations. I'm telling you this morning, you can take the time to know the Prince of Peace. Pause with me and repeat this prayer after me. Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Make me a new person. Give me the true meaning of Christmas. If you said that prayer with me, I want to take a minute to pray for you. Father, you've heard the prayer of those who, Lord God, wants you as the center of Christmas. Father, I pray now that your Holy Spirit will come in and dwell within them. Lord God, make them, Lord God, a new person, a new creature, as your word says, that all things will be passed away and behold, all things will become new. Lord, I pray for them right now in in the name of Jesus. I'd just like to take the time also to pray for those who are sick because I firmly believe that the word of God says the prayer of faith will save the sick. 
So I want to take the time now to pray for you. Just reference God with me. Place your hand on whatsoever part of your body is ailing, ailing you. I want to pray a prayer of faith. Father, in the name of Jesus, you see that person, Lord God, they believe in Jesus Christ. Huh? But right now, they are suffering with that in, incurable disease. Lord God, right now, they are suffering with that pain. Father, in the name of Jesus, as I stretch forth my hand, I pray, Lord God, that relief will come now in the name of Jesus. Deliverance will come in Jesus' name. We thank you again for listening to this broadcast. As I quickly say that, hey, remember the true meaning of Christmas. The true meaning is Jesus Christ. Remember, he was born. He died and he's alive today to save you. God richly bless you until another time. I'm Brother Curtis. Pleasure being with you. Amen and amen. This program comes to you compliments of the Tobago Inspirational Network. To support this and other programs, we encourage you to give to TIN. Contributions can be made at any First Citizens Bank at account number 203-4679. We thank you for your support.